Um, so this is the landing page uh, that we have designed currently. Um, and as you can see um, from the illustrations here, we're, we're pretty much aiming for it to support um, all of the main digital media presentation types um, that you typically see, um, audio, video, animations, uh, and, and we really do want to have a leg into the virtual reality realm as well. Welcome to Algo HQ. I am Ibu Karel, here with Jasmine and Ryan of Zest Bloom, an NFT platform being built on Algorand. Welcome to Algo HQ. Thank you. Thank We're you. happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, so I found about um, your project on Twitter, and I was really interested because there's no public, easily accessible uh, NFT platform on Algorand right now. So can you describe Zest Bloom in your own words? Yeah, um, we're we're essentially aiming to be a uh, media, an empty based media um, exhibit kind of. Um, we we want something to be available where people can experience all kinds of art, whether it's digital media based, audio, video, uh, animations, um, but also we, we kind of want it to be open up to uh, real world assets as well. And, and you know, that's going to be up to the artists who do those kinds of things, um, how they want to tokenize their assets. But um, the initial idea, the seed is a, um, you know, a kind of a, a media experience. Um, but of course, uh, as you know, um, there's not really a lot out there and Algorand's really new. Um, so we were, we kind of wanted to jump in there first and build a marketplace that, um, you know, can meet the need. Uh, and we've got some pretty cool ideas that we want to get to, you yeah. know, later on. Yeah, of definitely. Course. Yeah. I mean, um, obviously everything you just stated, but we also wanted to remind ourselves that the environment is crucial and that our platform is a form for where we think about our future and our past and we combine both the art as well as the technology so that we can move forward for a better place for everybody. Um, so that's why Algorand was the best choice, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so can you tell me a little bit about both your backgrounds and what brought you together to create an NFT platform on Algorand? So I'm actually a web developer, emphasis on graphic design. Um, I do a lot of the front end work and I really got um, interested in kind of going into an industry that would help facilitate that. Um, I went ahead and started Zestbloom as a company. Um, my husband helped create and foster that idea. He. Uh, well, I'm a, I'm a software engineer. He's uh, a software engineer. I have 13 years of experience doing um, software QA in the con uh, consumer entertainment uh, industry. Uh, with a bit of cloud, uh, cloud computing and, um, and uh, other stuff sprinkled in there. Um, so I'm basically the lead researcher uh, at Zest Bloom. <laughs> <laughs> so together with both uh, the creative side and the technical side, we were able to create Zest Bloom. Oh, that's awesome. That's really awesome. We're actually originally from California, but we moved out to Vermont about three years ago. Yeah, so that's kind of interesting. <laughs> How's it, be, how's it uh, being probably the only blockchain developers in Vermont? That's exactly what it feels like, <laughs> as you described. It's a little lonely. <laughs> you can't Sorry. really communicate with anybody about the subject. <laughs> People have no idea what it's about. Yeah. And we even did a little like shout out on Reddit and we got um, absolutely no... We got downvoted. In downvoted. <laughs> <laughs> downvoted in the community <laughs> for bringing up NFTs. <laughs> not ready. It's a harsh market. <laughs> Uh, at any rate. <laughs> so what kinds of art will someone be able to list on Zestbloom? Are we talking uh, illustrations, renders, video, music, VR? How do you, uh, how do you expand this artwork palette? So we wanted to um, give you kind of an opportunity. It's the, to showcase some of the work we've done. So we're going to go ahead and do a demo for you right now. Your wow. exclusive demo. Nobody else has seen this. So. This is uh, uh, HQ exclusive. You know, this is MVP stuff. So, you know, there's more to come. <laughs> yeah, yeah, please uh, pull it up. Um, so this is the landing page uh, that we have designed currently. Um, and as you can see um, from the illustrations here, we're we're pretty much aiming for it to support um, all of the main digital media presentation types um, that you typically see 
um, audio, video, animations, uh, and, and we really do want to have a leg into the virtual reality realm as well. Um, now, currently, uh, you know, it's a it's a marketplace where people who make these digital creations have a place to put them, and to um, to share them and to sell them to one another. Um, ultimately, though, uh, we are going to focus really on the media side of it, um, and, and we we're going to want to have. Um, native playback for some of these assets as well. And we're even trying to um, carve out a space for real world artists as well to be able to tokenize their creations. Um, and I think there's a lot of uh, untapped ground where, um, you know, people can share their artwork in a new way. Uh, and then by tokenizing it, uh, they can kind of give value added to real world experiences whether that be going to a concert and saying, hey, I'm this NFT owner and getting some kind of a special a special treatment or, you know, showing up at someone's art studio in a, you know, in a rural state like where, where we're at and then having having the ability to say like, hey, you know, I, I bought this uh, and then be rewarded with, you know, maybe the real item itself, or, you know. We're also um, trying to keep in mind about different features that artists need. Um, as you mentioned, you're in the music industry and you dedicated a lot of your life in it. And you collaborate with a lot of people when you're in the music industry. And my brother, who's a drummer, a professional drummer, also collaborates with a lot of people. So if he wanted to create an NFT and he wanted to market himself, he normally joins a band or a group or collaborates with other individuals. And so we wanted to keep that in mind when the royalty payouts hit. So what we've created is a, co I'm sorry, a collaboration um, system where people can actually um, collaborate and join in together and then have royalties split among those individuals mm. um, in the smart contract process. Mm -hmm. So um, in addition to that, we're also keeping in mind that we wanted to create a digital gallery system. So when you have several pieces of work that you want to display, we want to be able to display that for you. And we also eventually want to be able to pull other arts and other pieces and other collections that you've gathered amongst different platforms and put it all in one location so that you can have that centralized. We've got our follower system. So it's kind of a little bit like Twitter when you look at it, you kind of mm -hmm. get the concept and idea of mm -hmm. you have friends and followers and you can um, connect with one another. Mm -hmm. We'll have a chat system so people can communicate when they want to collaborate with each other. Mm -hmm. um, also, we have these tags that um, you get to decide how, how you want to tag your product. So Illustrator, or let's say you want to call you, yourself something different. Then we have custom, yeah, okay. custom tags. And we have, and we're also keeping in mind that audiobooks and literature is also an option. So people who read audiobooks or have poetry mm -hmm. or um, all those things are designed in mind in the platform. It could be useful if you could do a custom tag, like let's say you, you do, um, you write we, books, lyrics, poems, and this, and if you can put, write yourself as writer, but then under that, within the system, you can, you can say, I'm going to tag myself as writer, but I'm actually relating to all these different things and the categories that I guess the algorithm might pick up. So when... Uh, an artist feels like they span multiple mediums, they can connect all those um, as a layer underneath their tag. And then everybody who's interested in those topics will find them as well. That's exactly what we did actually. We created a custom tag system right underneath the already um, mentioned tags. So exactly what you just said, that was a, that was a concern for us as well. <laughs> also during the asset upload, um, there's a custom tag area so if, if, a, if a particular asset covers multiple um multiple topics that's that's an opportunity as well to diversify i think it's really important in today's day and age when a lot of creative people can do things in multiple genres and they reach into each of those um for different gigs and different um uh, opportunities they may have i mean like personally i do some singing and then videos and i think something like that for that would be useful for a lot of people who um, are in the same boat. Yeah, that's what we were hoping to create that filter system and also create a community in some communities because um, we understand that sometimes you work for with a specific type of community. 
so that you can gain that kind of um, publication that you need for that industry. And obviously not everybody works in every industry. So yeah. um, will the platform host um, visuals for 3D art or in-game art, maybe something like that? Yes. VR, how many um, mediums can you actually show on Zestbloom? Uh, currently, we're sticking to the the, the basic, um, you know, the most basic presentations, but uh, we have an eye for those other other topics in yeah. the future. Yeah, okay. we've got. Well, we're working. Um, we've got a few engineers working with us. We have t um, two that we're working with, and then we also have two partners that joined in. One is a crypto um, engineer, and then we also are considering hiring a third engineer or a fourth engineer. I'm including my husband, so that would be five engineers. Hmm. Really meet all of those uh, demands. <laughs> That's great that the team is growing. Yeah, it's it's slowly growing, and and we've um, you know done this by ourselves. There's no assistance um, in regards to and paying to, and investment. This has all been bootstrapping this entire time. <laughs> to add to that, we still have our day jobs, so. and we still work, <laughs> and we have two kids. <laughs> It's amazing the um, <laughs> so, sacrifices that y'all are making, and you're still keeping everything going. Yeah, we we're working very very hard. We work on weekends and late 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 nights, and we put the kids down. Sticks and ducks. <laughs> That's how it has to be. That's amazing, though. I can I can feel the passion radiating through this video we're, call. We're hoping we really are. Yeah. Uh, this is kind of our baby. And we've been working really hard to okay. make it welcoming. So yes. yes. Yeah. Um, and like you stated, we are deeply interested in VR and 3D. That is, um, I think, a direction that hasn't really been hit and it definitely needs a community. So we're there for it. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> That's awesome because I think those, um, those art types are just going to keep becoming more prevalent as we uh, reach into the future with things like maybe projections or holograms. Um, they start to be, come oh. to actual reality. It'll take any NFT imagine you can actually display your nft with a hologram in your house like that's yeah. probably going to happen yeah. so that's, that's pretty cool that yeah that's exactly what we're working to do so that's our aim <laughs> i cannot wait for that yeah it's going to be really cool if i'm an artist why should i use zestbloom over another nft marketplace what unique incentives are zestbloom um, bringing to the table and how does this relate to um, the algorand factor building on top of Algorand as well? Um, sure, well, uh, initially, I think when we decided this was kind of the route we wanted to go, um, we hadn't necessarily decided which, decided which blockchain um, we wanted to use. Um, but I think one of the really big factors for us was uh, we wanted to use a technology that could be considered uh, eco-friendly. Um, when you put that criteria on it, it really only it narrows it down um, tremendously. Um, Algorand just true. seems to make a ton of sense for us because it's so fast and so efficient and it has such a robust feature set just baked right into that beautiful sweet layer one blockchain um, and it allows us to do some really cool stuff uh, that we're aiming to do for the artists in particular which is um, royalties on every sale of their work um, as long as it's traded at any point in time um, we, you know, collaborations was a really big factor for us. We wanted multiple people to be able to get payouts for that as well for, for when they all work on something. Um, and, and that's why should what, anybody use us over another uh, um, platform? Well, I mean, I think Algorand is a superior technology to any of the existing NFT platforms. And as for um, Algorand ecosystem, I think we're just looking to help it grow. And you know, whatever other platforms are out there, I don't think it matters to us. We just want to see it succeed. Yeah. <laughs> One thing to note is that uh, to I'm sure to lift uh, list an NFT, excuse me, on Zestbloom will be significantly more affordable than yeah. um, other chains because I personally uh, listed an NFT on Ethereum, um, and it cost me. $30 and that was like three months ago. Uh, and at this point with how crowded that ecosystem is, it might be a lot more. And I felt like that was just a really unfair um, ju juxtaposition to put the artist in when they're trying to make money off of their art and yet they're having to drop money 
more money than they may even make. And it just doesn't make right. any sense. It, it takes so, a huge chunk. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So how much will it actually cost to list um, an NFT on Zestbloom? We're thinking about making it free up to a certain point. So um, commission free for individuals that honestly can't afford to take a hit. Um, so the commission would probably only hit for people who have um, big pieces of work that will generate a huge amount of income for them. Mm. So yeah. it kind of depends maybe on the scale of the sale or the scale right. of the following um, of the artist. So if I'm, if I'm thinking of it correctly and um, please correct me if I'm wrong. So it, let's say you can list an artwork for free, but based on how much it sells for um, how is that a percentage going to zest bloom? And exactly. do, do you have an idea of what that could be right now? We're thinking around 8%. So, okay. um, and we haven't really decided on the cap on when we'll start actually hitting that 8%, but we want to make sure that artists generate an income. Like I said, yeah. I'm an artist. And I know what it, it's like to yeah. work on a piece and then not get that income back for the work yeah. and the dedication that you put into that. And uh, I mean, we did some research on, um, you know, even real world art galleries and auctions and things, you know, like the house takes 25%. So we felt that, you know, it, there's a lot of room for, you know, improving that. On That's the a much part. more affordable percentage. Yeah. yeah. We're here because we want to grow the ecosystem and we also want to grow the individuals. The, the ecosystem and the community and that ecosystem. Um, and while we're here, while we're talking about the process of um, minting art, um, we are planning on building IPFS backend into the application. So um, there's, we just want to reduce the number of steps it takes for you to get your art on the platform. Um, you know, it's just too much to go, you know, go to site A, upload your art, go to site B, get a short URL, um, and then go to site C and create your, um, you know, create your asset and then find a way to sell it. We kind of just want to make it as smooth, smooth sailing as yeah. possible for you guys. So can you explain what IPFS is? Yeah, uh, IPFS is a distributed file share system. Um, anybody who's done NFTs now is probably very familiar with it. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, it's, um, it's just... It's a way of putting your content onto a network that that it's able to um, index and find that content uh, based off of its hash, which is just a fancy math mathematical equation that describes the that distills down describes that um, that component with a unique ID. Yeah. Um, it totally takes out the need for um, locating something by its its like address in the internet and and just allows it to be found through its its hash, which is unique to that item. Mm, gotcha. So you're trying to take all those steps that might make the process of listing art a bit more complicated and integrate everything into one seamless process on Zestbloom. Precisely. Correct. Yeah. I love okay. that. That's what we need. We need simplicity in the crypto industry, not complexity. Yeah. Exactly. The more yeah. complex everything is, the more it turns people off because they have no idea what anybody is talking about. That's right. They get discouraged. 100%. Yeah. Because it's, yeah. it's complex stuff that has very simple use cases, but you know, there's people behind it, like y'all who are really building the technology. You can know about that as long as it's good for the consumer to yeah. just jump in. That's what's really going to bring both parties uh, the most joy. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. All right. So um, what's your experience been like working on Algorand and with Algorand? Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I think as I said earlier, we, we hadn't decided exactly which blockchain to use um, when we first decided we were going to go this route, but it, it, it was a clear, clear winner. Um, the SDKs are like beautifully written. They have multiple language support. Um, the, the dev docs are amazing. And really, um, it's nice to see a project that's solely focused on the fundamentals and growing organically rather than um, some of these other blockchains which are focused on hype. Um, but when you really get down, down into some of the technicals, they just don't hold up. So I really don't have any, any negative things to say about it. The Not community so is amazing too. The community is wonderful. Like yeah. we're really lucky to be joining that kind of community that's supportive and everybody's wanting everybody to grow. Um, and that's essential. So. <laughs> I think that's really true. Um, that's that's really good news for developers because that's what I've heard from a few people I've talked to that everything 
on the development side and coding side of Algorand is very welcoming and it'll, it's not obscure. If you know anything about coding, you can somehow get involved. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. I love I mean, that. He's a, he's a Python yeah. programmer and, um, they, it's beautifully written for Python and it, it's, you can switch into any other language and it's pretty much just available for all those languages. I love that. All right. So Jasmine, can you offer any guidance to women interested in the blockchain industry on how to get involved and how to learn and what's your experience been like? Um, there's not many women in this industry right now. There isn't um, any that I've met so far. I would love for women to reach out to me, um, you know, get a hold of me on zestbloomgmail.com. Like, like reach out to me. I would um, love to build a community with other women currently. Um, it's, in, it's, it's a little difficult because you are in a man's world and um, it's not always easy for, you know, not only do I get nervous because I have to talk, in front of everybody else, but I also don't have anybody else to look to as a peer. So um, that makes it a little challenging at times, but the community is really welcoming. I think women shouldn't be afraid to join it. I think that um, if we build a community with one another, it, it'll be a little easier. <laughs> um, just because it'll be refreshing, you can look to someone else that um, has that experience. I feel like since I've joined, our partners have been really really helpful my husband's been really helpful and the partners that we've been working with have always looked to me for my designs and my work and um it's it's been a really fun experience and i do hope women decide to join the industry and i think the way the best way to do it is just create a community with one another so i do hope that i can help foster that yeah. Also, since it's early on in the, in, you know, in this industry, the ecosystem hasn't really been developed. And so this is really the time for women to join because, you know, they can really take a huge piece of the industry for themselves and really make it their own and then open it up to everybody else, like really get that different perspective. So I really feel like women shouldn't be afraid to just jump on board. <laughs> That's so true. That, that, that is a very good point. That is a very good point. Um, so is there a planned tokenization of Zest Bloom? If so, can you describe to me the details uh, that you can share about this? I know some other NFT platforms have tokenization. Um, so what do you, uh, what do y'all have for ideas based on tokenization of Zest Bloom? I think at this time, um, we haven't considered it fully. Um, you know, we're, we're going the kind of the traditional route um, as we're incorporating um, with, you know, traditional shares. I know there's some really cool stuff out there where um, some companies are offering their Series A um, share or uh, what do you call it? Uh, class A common stock. Class, class A, a. Yeah. 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 Um and, and you know, that's something I think we don't, we might not quite have the guts to do just yet. <laughs> But you know, it's it's an option. I, I don't think I don't think at this time we've we've given it enough thought. Yeah, I mean, we have so much going on right now, and, and we've got all these really lofty goals. I think that right now our focus is to make sure that the product is it's as best as it can be, and we're implementing it with quality in mind. So, yeah. I would say it's best to focus on that. Yeah, focus on the platform. That's what all the artists are going to want. Tokenization mm -hmm. is a extremely complex issue um, and challenge to face and it's definitely not something you want to rush into so i would say if you ever have a plan for tokenization or um just shares of the stock yeah like take your time on that because the one thing that investors aren't going to want is uncertainty exactly exactly um, so what's the planned release schedule for zest bloom our goal is around end of july um beginning of august probably publicly August and end of July will be um, for curated artists that we've chosen to use the platform. So they'll have the opportunity to um, showcase their artwork before anybody else. And they can also help us debug it. So that's our goal. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. So a um, late summer type of early fall general target. Yeah. Uh, can't wait. That's when like, other projects are definitely going to be hitting the ecosystem at the same time. And that's, that's going to be a very exciting time. There's going to be so much so um, activity happening in the Algorand community. 
it's yeah. a lot is going to happen. Great. It's, gonna be awesome. it's, it's been overdue, right? <laughs> it's like a chemical uh, concoction and you just keep adding ingredients. Eventually it's going to bubble. <laughs> um, is there anything else you'd like to tell the community? Um, anything I missed that you really want to talk about? Um, just make sure to give us a like and a follow. Um, you know, and, blue, yeah. and, you know, we still have space open for um, creators to join you know, and yes. people who want to get in on the early, um, early beta. Um, we are offering a um, hundred, um, we're calling them the Zest Bloom vouchers, which are essentially redeemable for um, a completely, so initially, and I think we, we mentioned that for um, smaller sales, um, we are we are probably not going to take a commission on smaller sales, but for larger sales, um, these tokens will be redeemable in the smart contracts, uh, and they will reduce the fee to, to nothing as well. That's a cool uh, incentive for artists to get involved early. Yeah, yeah. there's only a hundred of them made. We made them just the other day, um, so there's only going to be a hundred in circulation. Also, we're um, offering shares to our company for those few hundred uh, curated artists as well. So they'll have an opportunity to buy in to the platform because we want to make sure that not only is our platform for artists, but it's also artists that have um, a stake in it. So we thought it would be great to just give it to the artists. <laughs> That's an amazing offer. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 oh. we wanted to, um, you know, continue growing with our artists and we want to know that they're always in our, you know, this is what it's designed for. It One designed cannot go without the other. So that's important. Yeah. yeah. That's very yeah. important. And I, you know, artists criminally, one of the most overlooked um, professions, you know, in terms of pay, it's mm -hmm. either you're way up here or you're probably somewhere down here. Uh, so for, you know, artists that that'll, that'll mean a lot. And that's, that's a really cool incentive from y'all. So I'm sure people will be grateful for that. Um, this has been the interview with Jasmine and Ryan of Zest Bloom, an NFT platform launching on Algorand sometime later this year, late early fall. Um, thank you so much for coming on Algo HQ. It's been a pleasure to have you. Awesome speaking with you. Thanks so much. Yeah, we're really grateful you gave us the opportunity to um, kind of voice our, our uh, thoughts and release our demo to you. <laughs> yes, that was amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.